Hey everyone, I'm Adam and I have Eve, a returning guest on from Dog Handler Academy. We have a previous video about starting a doggy daycare, doggy play place kind of um, business. That is linked below. But today we're going to get more into got this idea. You watched the video. And now you want to know more common questions, how to really get started, where to spend money. So that's what we're doing today. Thanks for coming back on, Eve. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad to uh, see so many people interested in following their passion and their love for animals. Yeah, it's awesome. It was so the video with you has been my most popular video on that channel. Like when I go look in it, people love dogs. So if you love dogs, this might be a good business to get into. Absolutely. You know, every I'm going to say millionaire, billionaire always says if you want to succeed, find something that you love and then figure out how to make a business out of it. Right. So this is perfect for that. All right, so we've had a lot of people watch and a lot of people have gone over to your website that's linked down below and you have a lot of resources, you have courses, you have people can book phone calls with you. So there's some questions that are popping up. What are you looking for? Right. So I always tell people your two options are to be close to where everybody lives or be close to where they work. People love to leave work and pick up their dog and then pet their dog on their way home. It's a great therapy. So those are kind of the two things. If you are in, I'm going to say a more rural area or, you know, your town has 50,000 people in it, but there's a high density. So there's a ton of apartment complexes that are dog friendly. That's the key. You need to be in your dog friendly apartment complexes. Um, so if you are in a high density dog friendly area, then that's a great place to start. If you are like, no, my city's like a hundred thousand people. We're everywhere. Then try and be as close to an on off exit on people's primary commute to work. So don't think of like a strip mall. Now you can make a strip mall work. I'm just saying these are like where I would look first for a property. You are a destination, but you need to be a convenient destination. Now, where is yours? So mine is n as close to where people work as possible. Um, I am within five minutes of two major medical facilities, two major um, manufacturing plants. My surrounding neighbors are a lumber yard, a counseling area for children. But yeah, I'm within five minutes of the biggest employers in my in my town. Okay. Um, I, I, I like you said the... Um an exit because people get off the exit easily go to wherever you're located if you can find somewhere there it's not like guaranteed you're going to find that and then off on the way to work you're not out of the way the strip malls are kind of out of the way they usually are and you know if you're like oh my gosh i'm craving tacos you're going to go to to a taco place and you might travel a little out of your way to get good tacos doggy daycares are becoming pretty prominent they're they're getting to be everywhere so that's where you need to be as easy in and out as possible. You do not necessarily need to be in an industrial commercial area. You can be in a retail area. In fact, most commercial areas, retail or commercial, you're going to be required to go get a conditional use permit because dog daycares are not really part of the building code. Right. Yeah, let's get into that zoning. Like um, That's scary for a lot of people. Um, it is scary for a lot of people, right? You have to go before a city council or a county board. The biggest thing as you're looking at properties and trying to decide, should I be close to where people live or should I be close to where they work? I would suggest that you go talk to the people in your city or county zoning department up front. What are some things like they might ask you or things that they're concerned about? Noise. You, yeah. And how do you respond to them? Right. So the barking dogs, typically inside the facility, the noise level is going to be to the sound of vacuuming. It'll be at that decimal level. Outside, you'll hear a dog periodically bark, but outside is meant to be potty time. Unless you're in a Southern state where your facility is going to be 90% outdoors, then you might have to think of um, adding in shrubbery and different things to kind of keep the noise down. Basically from upper Midwest or Midwest, we have winter. Right. So <laughs> we don't hang outside when it's below zero. We just go out, quick do our business and run back in. So, but noise is the big thing. Like, what are you going to do if dogs are barking? And 
the response that you should have for them is this isn't like a home environment where we're going to lock dogs outside for hours on end. And there's always somebody with them to work with any problematic barking dogs. Right. Okay. They're coming right back in after they do their, do their right. business. Yeah. Yep. This isn't your neighbor who just locked Fluffy outside for the day while they went to work and Fluffy saw a squirrel and is now losing their mind for half an hour. What are these zoning guys and gals say about like um, the waste? Yeah. Pee and poop. Big concern. And I will say they're more concerned about the poop. Okay. <laughs> So to the best of my knowledge, there aren't any municipalities that require you to to label the poop as a biohazard. Mm -hmm. So basically, you just need to make sure that you are containing it. Typically, that's in a plastic garbage bag of some sort and then putting it into a dumpster. And then they're going to ask, well, how often does that dumpster get picked up? Mine gets picked up weekly and there isn't a smell wafing in the neighborhood from it. If you're, again, in a hotter, more humid climate, you might need to get your poop picked up a little more frequently, or maybe you're going to double bag your poop. So then again, that smell isn't going to come out as much. If you're like, oh, well, we're going to be a small daycare, like 20 dogs. So we're just going to scoop the poop and flush it down the toilet. There's a big cost to that. And your municipality is probably not going to like that answer because right. that has to go into the wastewater treatment plant. And even at 20 dogs a day, if each dog poops twice, that's 40 flushes that are going to the wastewater treatment plant per day. Not so, counting the humans that work for you. Correct. Correct. Um, and, you know, water is a commodity, right? Like there's droughts and there's shortages and that type of thing too. So I would not say that flushing it down the toilet is your best business model. And that would probably be something that would be frowned upon um, by the local people, legislative people. So... Uh, your dumpster would be good if you have a way to compost it or utilize the poop picker uppers like that go out to farms and like suck up poop and then spread it out into the fields. If you have a holding tank capacity, um, that would be an ideal solution as well. In fact, you yeah, there, make money is, off of that, right? You sell the dog's poop off to somebody that's going to go slurry it into a field. Yeah, there's people that would buy it. It's not going to be everywhere. It's going to be kind of hard to find. You have to make phone calls, but there are people who would buy it. And if not buy it, there are people who would just come pick it up because they want it for whatever process they're doing. Yeah, I actually um, was really trying to figure out a way to minimize all of my poop at work. And I found a worm farmer. Okay. So he farms worms and he was interested in it. He did not need all of the poop that I had. And I didn't want to monkey with it for that short term type of a solution. But, um, you know, a worm farmer might be an opportunity if you have, you know, a smaller daycare with smaller numbers. I want to jump off topic. I want to go back to the topic from the previous video, just in case no one watches that video. Sure. I want them to get kind of feel how you, you know, the kind of info you have in your course. And this was like one of the biggest comments on the video was about your paper towel usage. <laughs> So this is just a little example of the things that people aren't going to think about that you already know. So for the new people watching, let's just go over that again. You've got a rule about sure. paper towels. You've broken down the cost. Go ahead. All right. So I already gave you the example that each dog is going to poop twice a day. So if you have 20 dogs, that's 40 piles of poop. At my facility, um, we use the plastic bag method. So you put the bag over your hand and you grab your poop and you turn your bag upside down, just like if you were outside walking your dog. Then we have a two square rule. So you take two squares of paper toweling and you spray your cleaner and then you wipe up any residual poo. So think of like two pieces of TP. The reason for that is each square without coupons, discounts, whatever. So the average square of a piece of paper towel is four cents. So two squares is eight cents per pile of poop. Each dog poops twice, that's 16 cents per dog per day. And if you times that by how many dogs are in your facility, so for me, we do 110 dogs a day for daycare. I spend over $16,000 a year on paper towel. And that's not something that anyone think about when they're going into business. That's the last concern, but you know all this stuff. Correct. And that's the, the thing that your staff have a huge influence on is how much paper towel are they using? Are they diluting all of your cleaners appropriately? 
And if they're not one, that's unsafe, but two, the cost. I used to be able to pay 99 cents for a jug of bleach and now I'm at $3 for a jug of bleach and I use 10 jugs of bleach a day. If my staff are over pouring and not using measuring cups, you know, think of a bar, right? a bartender, right? In the bar, right? They're overshotting those drinks and they're super strong. That costs the bar money. Same right. thing with your diluting of your chemicals. Super important. And those are all things that your staff are gonna have a huge influence on. And that affects your bottom line over a period of time. Right. Four cents doesn't seem like much, but like you said, $16,000 over the course of a year, that's quite a lot. And if they're doubling what they're using, that's 32,000. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it never fails. You know, you'll see somebody like, oh my gosh. And they like, you know, wad it up in their hand. And I'm like, okay, first off, I see a little bit of poop and a whole lot of white paper towel. I want to see a lot of poop and a little bit of paper towel. All right. So thanks for going back over that again. I just wanted to People who aren't going to watch that other video to, to see some of that. Um, no, absolutely. It's, it's a conversation that I have with a lot of daycare owners, both people starting out and people that have been in the business for years that just have never drilled down enough in their financials to understand what all their costs are. Right. You may love dogs. You may get into this business, but it's still a business and you need to understand those things as well. Absolutely. Now on that, this is in every business. I have several businesses and people always talk to me and then they say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I, I say to them fundamentals, you don't go, don't go doing that yet. So like in your business, what is like, you know, they come to you, they're talking to you and they're like, Oh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. Like, what should they start with? Not go too crazy with. Sure. They need. Well, we talked about zoning. Yeah. Um, and, a follow up on that is you need to call either your Department of Agriculture, and I think we talked about this in the first one, your county health department, and whoever does animal control or humane society in your area. You need to talk to those three to find out what permits and what rules are there about opening up a dog daycare. A lot of states have started to look into regulating the dog daycare industry. Um, Iowa just last year updated and created some new rules. Each dog needs to have so many feet of personal space within a facility. So depending on the size of the dog depends on how many square feet of space they need, which then determines how big of a facility you need. Yeah. Just like yep. regular kids. Exactly. Exactly. So Iowa had made that change. Um, Denver, Colorado, it's one person to every 15 dogs. Okay. So one handler to every 15. And again, that just changes how you need to look at your business model and make sure that you are charging accordingly so that way you can actually make a living at this. So those are some fundamentals. The other key thing is as you're starting to look at what you need to put into your facility, I have a measuring stick. It's a thought process measuring stick and it has changed over the years. But when I first was opening my facility, the dollar amount was $200. Mm -hmm. If I was gonna spend more than $200, was that whatever it was I was going to do, was it for the staff safety, the dog safety, or the facility safety? If it was just a, oh my God, that would be so cool. And I'm a boss lady now and I need to have that. Yeah, yeah don't spend that money. Not today. Right. Uh, down the line, I get in all these ventures and everyone I'm getting in with, they're just like, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that. And I'm just like, we need to focus on the basics, the basics. And I'm a little different because it's like, is this going to add value where we can charge more money? Um, absolutely. Or is this absolutely needed? I like what you said. Is this going to make me cool yeah, or whatever? <laughs> no, don't get that. We don't want to be cool. We just want to make money. Right. Yeah. Do you need to, you know, logo your entire vehicle and get a wrap on it? Not necessarily. Is that going to benefit your business? Is that going to get you clients? First off, if you drive like a nut job, no, it's going to turn people away. Right. Secondly, are you going to drive around town all day long to make it of value so then you're getting clients? So those are the things. And, and for our industry, um, I did a survey of my clients about a year and a half in of why, and these weren't even my clients. We, we did it out in front of pet stores. Um, in choosing a daycare, what was most important to you? Location and how far away they were, out of, had to go out of their way to find the location. Two, safety. Were their pets 
safe. You know, so that's where I really go back to by touting that all of my staffers are CPR certified. That's a great marketing tool. I can pop a video up or a picture up on Facebook or Instagram constantly saying, oh, so-and-so just got certified. That goes a long way because we're taking care of people's fur children. They're not a dog. They are a fur baby. Let's be, let's be honest here. And so safety and giving people that reassurance, that's what gets you clients. Speaking on clients, uh, this is a question that pretty much everyone ever has when they're thinking about any business is how do you market and how do you acquire clients? Yeah. In the dog daycare industry, the dogs. Yeah, the dogs are your marketing tool. Okay. So every day uh, we take pictures or videos of the dogs within my facility and we post it up on Facebook. And then you just watch all the shares. Oh, shared here, shared there, shared there. I was actually in the Minneapolis airport, which is two and a half hours from my location. And I had on one of my sweatshirts that had our name on it. And a gentleman stopped me and he goes, fun for pets. I know that place. I said, oh, do you bring your dog there? He goes, no, my grand dog goes there. <laughs> wow, awesome. That's funny. The dogs, you know, that's the key thing is sharing the dogs. Some of our best videos have been, I had a dog out in the yard that was just barking up a storm. It was a cute little white fluffy dog with a bow in his hair, her hair, sorry. And she was just, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, fluffy. Really? Clifford cheated on you? Oh. Who did he cheat with a border collie? How dare he? And so I was like giving all this like terminology to this dog barking. Um, that one had over a thousand views as, and was shared for over 400 times. Right, nice. Now, if you're putting them on your Facebook and then maybe people are sharing them other places, are you putting some sort of like logo or phone number or saying that it's your business on there or is it just the video? Yeah. So when they share it from our page, it'll actually link our name in there. Um, so that's where people know that it's us. The other piece that I do is I um, take goodies along with rack cards. So I don't do a business card. I do a rack card and that's a third of a sheet of paper and it just lists all of our services. I don't put pricing on there just because I change my pricing as needed, um, but it just lists all of our services and I take those with a holder. That's the key thing. You need to be self-sufficient when you're dropping things off to other businesses. Right. And I take that to the vet clinics along with a tray of sandwiches or a tray of cookies. And we do that about every quarter. The veterinarians will refer people to us. Do you use any sort of um, paid advertising, whether it's Facebook or Google AdWords or anything like that? I occasionally will boost a post. Um, if it's a call to action type of thing. So we do holiday parties for our dogs. Okay. <laughs> um, so Halloween, the dogs can come and wear a costume. We'll have a costume contest. So I'll boost that post uh, as a way to show people that we're a fun place to bring your dog to hang out. Um, but above and beyond that, no, I've actually never had to pay for that. However, my web developer is great great at SEO optimization. And right. that, that is priceless. Like, so I'm in a city of 50,000 people, but then the suburbs around me are probably another 20 to 30,000. And again, I'm where people work. So if I just say lacrosse in all of my advertising, then if people are searching in Holman or on Alaska, I won't come up first. So having that great web developer that knows that I should put that all the little municipalities around me should be listed in my website and just optimizing that for search engines has been great. Right. That's one of those things in just general business where you know dogs, you know your dog um, handling business, but you don't know websites, do you? <laughs> I know about this much. <laughs> right. I know it's so, important. I know it's important. And that the fact that I know that it's important is the key. <laughs> so you're willing to pay someone to do it for you so that it's good and gets you business instead of just watching some YouTube videos and making a crappy thing. Absolutely. Because your website is it's where people are going to look to find out what are you about. Right. Um, the other key component to that website, SEO, is super important. Um, don't use stock photography in our business. You need to be genuine. So that means real life pictures of dogs in your facility. And even if you haven't opened yet, like as you're 
um, remodeling or as you're putting things together, snap those photos. Be like, hey, look, little Johnny popped over for a tour quick. He's enjoying our playground equipment. You right. know, that's a great way to build that momentum. So when you do open, people have seen dogs enjoying your facility. Yeah. You got to get in this mode of like a parent with their brand new child. You got to be taking pictures all the time. Anything is content. You can even put it on TikTok. I know TikTok is national worldwide, but, but if you put Doesn't it on TikTok matter. and you have your info kind of like in the video, people in your area will see it and they'll want to come. Um, so getting back into someone wants to start this, they're going crazy. They don't know what to buy. They don't know how much money. And th this is a hard question to answer. <laughs> how much money and what should you be buying first? Sure. So yeah, the money question is always a little tough. So my facility was a food warehouse. It was a wide open facility. Um, I took out 12 credit cards, borrowed $5,000 from my dad. In total, I spent $55,000 to open my facility. Um, things that you need to think about. Again, I, I went over the safety of the staff, safety of the dogs, safety of the business. So if the facility that you're looking at <clears throat> and whether that's renting or buying, and I would recommend that you start out renting and in your lease, you have the option to buy and first right of refusal. Unless you've been saving, you've got great credit and someone else in the house is working full time that you could go get a loan, look at leasing first because it's, it's less upfront. The things that you need to look at first to spend your money on is what can I do today to get open that at year one or year two, I can upgrade. So for boarding, um, I did standard steel crates and standard wire kennels that you would buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or your tractor supply. They have the best price, by the way. With the thought that those were $400 an enclosure. And when I had money, I would buy the fancy ones that were FRP and had a cute logo on them. And those are like $3,000 a piece. Okay. Did you so, ever, did you upgrade to those? I actually never did. Cause you don't really need, I was going to think you don't really need to. I don't. I, we board 130 animals every weekend. I, I don't need to upgrade. I'm good. However, I know a lot of facilities that have, and that's great. Um, but it's just, what can you do today to open that is safe, safe for your staff, safe for the dogs that then you can upgrade later. Um, a lot of people talk about the outside area. Your fencing needs to be top-notch secure. That is a non-negotiable. You can do it yourself, but it's a non-negotiable that it has to be safe and secure. AstroTurf. You don't need to buy new. In fact, people loved my old turf that I had. It was a used soccer field. It had all these white lines and stripes in it. And people were like, oh, look at my dog. He's running past the goal line. You know, they loved it. Uh, I paid a dollar a square foot for my used turf. It lasted me seven years. And then I upgraded to the new turf, which was around $6 a square foot. Now, when you say turf, is this for outside or inside? Outside, it is AstroTurf. Okay. And that's because you were in a more industrial place? You didn't have grass yard or anything? Well, when you have 100 animals every day, there's no longer any grass. Oh, okay. Is mud. And it doesn't matter, honestly, if you're going to do more than 10 dogs a day, you're going to want to do turf. Okay. Interesting. See, that's something no one knows. Yep. Um, people have tried wood chips. Great. Now you got a white dog that you got to bathe down every day. People right. have tried, you know, river rock. Great. And then you get those dogs that want to eat the rocks and now you're paying a vet bill. Just up front, do some used turf. It's not, you know, the used turf is not that expensive. You can install it yourself. Is it and just over the grass or do you put yep. down some sort of subjects? Um, I put, I put down, oh, what the heck do they call it? Filament. Um, it's the, it's not the gravel, but it's not the sand. It's like the crap in between. So okay. it's, cheap. um, but yep, you just put down, you know, half inch to an inch of it, depending on, you know, what's underneath. And then you put your turf, turf over it. So oh, yeah. it allows great drainage. Um, you can bleach it. You can pressure. Well, you can lightly pressure wash it. Um, you can enzyme cleaner it, but that is something that if it's raining, the dogs are still going to get a little wet, but they're not going to get muddy. Okay. You can shovel it if it's snowed outside. 
-hmm. and it makes it a lot easier to clean up the poop. And then if it rains, then it just washes off and you don't have to spend any money on uh, there you go. water. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's really it. Like that's the, the bigger dilemma is, you know, all the other options, you're going to have to wash the dog off. They're going to get dirty. So unless you plan on giving 10, 20, 30 baths every day, right. just go with turf. Now, what about um, like software in the beginning? Is that if you got 10 dogs, is, is that necessary? If you have 10 dogs, you can probably just use Google Calendar. Once you hit 20, it gets a little more complicated. There's about, I think, 15 different software companies out there for our industry. The most expensive one on the market right now is Ginger. Then you probably have Pro Pet, Kennel Connection, Pet Exec, Kennel Geek. So there's a lot of different ones. They will all take reservations, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of it. The key things that you want to look at are, can you use your own credit card processor or do you have to use theirs? Because mm -hmm. theirs is usually more expensive. So that's huge. Are they user friendly from the client side? So if you do a demo, make sure that you're able to create a profile as if you were a client signing up. You want to see what would a client go through. Because that's, that's important. If somebody is, gets frustrated, they're like, I, your system is so complex. They'll go use somebody else who has it easy. So yeah, I'd, I'd never even thought that there would be that side of it, but it makes sense because it's almost an application because you can turn away dogs, right? I mean, I'm sure you've been like, no, we can't. Yes. And, and, um, is their application somewhat customizable? Right. So I've added questions. Have you used another facility in the last two weeks? If they say yes, why are you leaving? Right. Did you get kicked out? Is your dog a jerk? Like, because most people, when they start using a dog daycare, they stay with that daycare and, until they get pissed off. It's like right. a hairdresser. Once you find somebody that you trust to cut your hair just right, I, right, <laughs> you're not going to leave unless they piss you off. Um, so I keep sidetracking you. Uh, so we, we got, got you on a software. We were talking about the kennels, um, yeah. safety, the turf. That was very interesting. What is, what's some other things that really help your day out efficiency cost wise that you should be looking at in the beginning spend the time and either hire somebody or have somebody that's close to you come through and document all your processes and create checklists there's so many moving parts in a dog daycare it, these are just like children right so checking in where do their belongings go what play group are they in who are their friends who are their enemies do we need to have a special lunch for them? You know, there's all these things that go on per dog in your facility. So I posted out on Facebook. I said, I need someone to create a standard operating procedure manual. Who do I know that can do that for me? Right. And it was somebody who actually owns her own business called Juggling Time. And so she's a virtual assistant. She came to my facility and she followed us, myself and my staff around for four days, documenting everything that we did, made a manual, and then created checklists for the morning staff, for the afternoon staff, for the evening staff. So that way, everybody remembered what they needed to do. Everybody followed the same policy. Everybody followed the same procedure, especially when you're starting out because you're like, oh, well, I didn't. I worked nights all the time. I didn't know morning staff, you know, did this. You know, you could have people repeating processes that didn't need to happen or people just not even doing a process because when they got hired, Johnny forgot to teach Jane, you know, how to hit the button to drain the dishwasher or something. Right. And so she hasn't been doing it and she's been here for four months. Now, is this, does it get down to dog specific or it's kind of like the general thing? And then when you get to the point was like, does this dog need a special lunch? Then, then they're supposed to either remember a check or. Right. That, and that's, that's really where, where the checklists come in. So for us, um, dog comes in with the owner, the owner hands us a Ziploc baggie. And this is also training for your clients. Okay. How do you want to receive stuff? So if you're going to allow dogs to have lunch while they're there for daycare, <clears throat> which my opinion, they don't need unless they're a puppy. So we tell them you need to put it in a Ziploc baggie or a container and have their name on it, both first and last name. Because if I have five Bellas, which one am I giving this food to? I have seven Maxes. I have three Zeuses. 
they hand you the baggie. It's got their first and last name on it. And we say lunch or dinner. They say lunch. Great. We take the dog back. We have a lunch bin. So we put the food in there and then we have a sign off board that we put the dog's name, their breed. And then later that day when we're feeding lunches, whoever's feeding the lunches marks yes, ate or no, did not. So if somebody calls and says, well, they gave me my full bag of food back. They didn't try feeding them. I can go, oh yeah, they did. I can pull the sheet. Yep. Right here, Bella. Yep. Nope. Did not eat lunch that day. Here's my proof. Don't right. call my staff a liar. So um. it, it creates trust with your, with your clients that you have a process in place, that you have checks and balances. Because then when I said, nope, right here, see, it shows that they did and no, he didn't eat. Well, I just don't understand. And then I can say, well, you know what? Fluffy just likes to play with her friends all day long. She's just not interested in eating here. She would prefer to play with her friends than sit in a suite for 30 minutes and try and eat some lunch. Oh, she just wants to play. Yep. So you don't so, need to pack that anymore. Oh, cool. There, you have an entire website and an entire course, and people can book time to call you for free, a 45-minute consultation, right? Yes, yeah. It's very useful for a lot of people when they're like, okay, I decided this is what I want to do. I've been looking at properties. I've talked to some friends. There are just so many moving pieces to this. You know, it's not like a retail store where, oh, I'm going to rent this space and then I just go buy inventory. You know, there's checks and balances. You have to make sure your zoning is correct. You have to make sure you have all the proper permits from your health department, your department of agriculture. And then what are the rules? You know, how many dogs to handlers? How much space do you need? So it gets very convoluted of where to start. So sometimes just a 45 minute conversation with me and we can kind of break down, you know, the top 10 things that you should do to determine, is this going to be feasible for you? Then, then it, it gives you a direction to start. Um, and then if you need more chatting later on or pick my brain on something, then we can uh, book another session or a Zoom call or um, we, I do allow people to come and visit my facility. And I recommend that too. If this is something you want to get into, you need to go at least four hours away and be honest with them. Say, hey, I'm looking to start up a facility. I'm four hours away. Can I see your facility? What do you like about your facility? What do you hate about your facility? If you could do it over, what would you do differently? Yeah, I toured 28 different facilities in multiple states. And that saved me thousands of dollars when I first opened. On that, what is one thing that you see common that people are asking you or wanting to do? Like, what's a mistake? or a bad decision they're making in the beginning? Live feed cameras. Right. We Don't. talked about this before, but go ahead and get into it. <laughs> yeah. So you want to have cameras. So if something goes wrong, you can go back and review. You do not want to have cameras that allow clients to watch your staff all day long. Because they're going to um, nitpick. They're going to nitpick. Why is Fluffy sitting by herself in the corner? Because she's tired. She needs a break. That black dog has been picking on Fluffy all day. Why is your staff not doing anything? They're playing. That, right. That's what they're supposed to do. Fluffy likes him. They're buddies. You will spend so much time answering the phone and having conversations that it will exhaust you and it will burn you out. Secondly, and this is what I learned by touring other facilities, They've had issues with clients stalking their staff. Majority of the staff that work in the dog daycare environment are female. Right. And they've had people stalk them through the live feed cameras, knowing what when they got off or commenting, oh, yeah, I saw that, you know, Fluffy was sniffing at you pretty hard today on the cameras. That's creepy. Yeah. That's creepy to know that you were watching me, you know. So, so have, have the cameras to create accountability with your staff. Um if people need to know what's going on throughout the day, they can call, they can message. You can charge them for a little video of what Fluffy was doing. Right. Um, but yeah, don't spend that money. Um, and that's easily a $6,000 price tag and up. Right. Did you do that in the beginning or you just knew not to? I knew not to by touring the other facilities. It was something I had on my checklist to get bid. So I'm yeah, I was, no. I was going to have it bid out and install it. And then based on other facilities feedback, I was like, nope, I'm going to save that money and we're going to use it somewhere else. Okay. Well, and this is, these are all things, everyone, uh, that a professional knows. So I know it's kind of hard to be like, let me pay someone, but you're going to say whatever I charge you for anything I teach you or anyone teaches you, including Eve, 
is going to save you way more money, way more money than uh, trying to go on it at your own. Um, so it is very valuable. And all those links to Eve's website, Dog Handler Academy, are down down there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, it, like I said, you know, traveling and just visiting all those daycares that saved me so much money because you don't know what you don't know. Right. And what I think people want and what I thought the dogs needed, I was so wrong on a lot of things. And I think we talked about it last time, in-floor heat. Unless you have cats or hairless dogs, they don't want in-floor heat. No. And that's an expensive thing to put in. That's a very expensive thing. And if you put that in your boarding area and a dog has explosive diarrhea in the middle of the night, oh, it will then adhere to the floor. Oh. And that is a 20-minute cleanup job. Right. More than two paper towels. More than two paper towels. Right. Because you're going to have to soak that poop to get it off that heated, crusted floor. You know, in your mind, right? Oh, my God. I would love heated floors. Yeah, you the human. Right. Dogs have fur. Your dogs yeah. don't lay on your on your heat register in your house. Your cats might, but your dogs are like, "Ooh, give me the cold tile floor in the kitchen or the linoleum in the kitchen." So yeah, with any business, and these are things that I didn't think about. And since our interview, I was thinking I like to think about how they run and everything. But these these are like things that no one would think about. And as with any business, it's. Like you said, everyone wants to get these things because we want it. We think it's cool. Yeah. You got to stick to the fundamentals. Whatever the fundamentals are with your business, and if you don't know what they are, go tour, go talk to you, and find out the fundamentals so you're not wasting money. Uh, then you're more profitable faster. Absolutely. And there's things that you can just you can upgrade later. If you're doing a good job on the basics, great. And then later on, when you have a little cash flow, you know, you've learned some lessons along the way. You want to upgrade? Upgrade. Right. You don't want to upgrade? Like, I didn't upgrade any of my kennel suites. They're they, all the same still. Because they were fine. And up, they were would, fine. Would upgrading it allow you to cut up, uh, charge more? And that's exactly it. If, if I would have put in the $3,000 suites, they look pretty. Again, clients don't see them. The dogs sleep in them. Right. So they would look pretty in a picture on my website and maybe charge four or $5 more per night. But it would take me so long to recoup that cost that it wasn't worth it. When I replaced my AstroTurf, I went with new turf versus used this time. And I changed out my chain link fence and I buried it. Um, so I did an eight foot fence, but I buried it down two feet. So that way the dogs couldn't dig out. Right, because you learned something along the way. I was assuming I when you're talking about a secure fence that it was buried. Correct. Yeah. So so that's something that I upgraded to. But again, it was safety, right? Yeah. Like I really look at you can ha I have an ugly facility compared to all my competitors. I'm ugly compared to my competitors, but I do the most dogs right. every day. There's a wait list to get into my facility. I can't really complain. You know, right. it, it's great. You you don't need to have all the bougie. You need to be safe. Make a list of all the things that you need and then go tour those other facilities and you'll see how many of those things you can cross off. All right, Eve, it's been excellent having you back on again. Um, before you go, I just, is there anything else that is helpful or just to reiterate to people? Yeah, make a list of all the things you think need to go into your facility. Make a list. I mean, nitpick it, you know, oh my gosh, I need a grooming blow dryer. Oh my gosh, I need Egyptian towels to dry dogs off with. Like make a list of everything you think you need and then go to our other facilities. You'll be amazed at how many things you can either completely eliminate from that list or downgrade significantly. Because people, this is still a business just because you love dogs um, <laughs> does not mean you need to spend all your money on whatever you think you need. You only need right. what you need and you don't know uh, you what know. it is yet. Absolutely. Oh, I need biodegradable poop bags. Why? You realize how much poop you're picking up? Those are expensive. I'm not, so wait, I'm not so against we, biodegradable. I'm just saying like, is that where you should start with right. spending your money? You can get there later. You can get there later. Whole goal is to get going, people. But Eve, thank you for being on again. And again, everyone, all the links are down in the description down there. Uh, maybe we'll do a part three.
Never know. Never know. Yeah. No, it's great that people are commenting on your post. So that way, um, you know what questions that we should talk about. And, you know, people have called and we've done 45 minute consults and, and more. And again, drilled down and uh, trying to help people get into this line of work. I mean, I love my job. I'm nine years in and I love getting up at 530 in the morning and going in and picking up poop. And, uh, you know, it's um, it's been a great ride. And I don't foresee myself ever being an absentee owner. I absolutely love what I do. Awesome. Well, I wish you continued success and until next time. Thank you. Thanks.